We have seen in the previous video that the open interval isn't compact, because we implicit, explicitly exhibited an example of an open cover for this interval, which has no finite subcover. And basically this cover was this, there's uh, increasing sets uh, that gradually um, grow until they exhaust this open set. Basically, we have seen that for every point that we take in the original interval, we will eventually be able to find an element of the cover that is going to contain this point, and therefore the union of all these infinitely many uh, open sets in the cover uh, will be equal to this original set, therefore they form a cover. And we've also seen that there is no finite subcover for this cover, because if we stop at some finite place, then of course there will be points here that are close enough for one that are not contained in any finite such uh, interval. But the question is, right, this is, we have seen this, but the deeper question is, why can't we apply the same reasoning uh, that works behind the proof of the heine borel theorem for the closed interval? Where's the main difference between the open and the closed interval? So, um, and we'll see this shortly. So, suppose that we have this open interval, right? And uh, we uh, start, we proceed by the same reasoning. Suppose that we have an open cover here that has no finite subcover. Then there is, uh, we, we can look from the middle to the left and from the middle to the right. And so at least one of the halves of this interval doesn't have a finite subcover. And suppose that in this case it is this half. It doesn't have a finite subcover. Okay. And so uh, one of its halves. Uh, at least one of its halves doesn't have a finite subcover, so we can continue. And it may so happen, uh, okay, so that one of these halves uh, doesn't have a finite subcover. Look what happens. It may happen that all those intervals that we choose that happen not to have a finite subcover are those uh, right halves of each interval. And I think we are beginning to develop the intuition of what is happening. And I take this one and, and this interval, and suppose that at each such choice, I do get um, an interval here that doesn't have a finite subcover, and this is indeed the case because they all contain, they are close as, as can be, I mean, they contain all the numbers that are strictly smaller than one. And so if we were, uh, this is indeed the case, if we were to look at the point at, at this cover, right, so if we look at this cover, it is indeed the case that each of those intervals, right, isn't, doesn't have a finite subcover, because any, fi any finite subcollections of this original cover will, will not be able to uh, cover any of those intervals, right? Because they will have points that are close enough to one uh, that are not included in any uh, such set with a finite index. So there is no contradiction here, as we can see. And the reason that there is no contradiction is that uh, essentially we cannot say this thing that um, that we said in uh, heine borel's theorem because we invoked Cantor's lemma and we said that uh, those intervals all right the closed intervals according to Cantor's lemma uh, they have non-empty intersection which consists of exactly one point as and as you can see here uh, what happens basically is that the middle point of all those intervals right if we look at this as a sequence it tends to converge to 1, this as a sequence, so it tends to this right limit. And so basically the interval that we're going to get in, in the limit, so of course it's all the numbers that we're going to have in the, in the intersection are going to be strictly smaller than 1, but on the other hand, um, any number strictly smaller than 1 will be outside of one of those intervals eventually. So this intersection is going to be empty. And since this is empty, we cannot say that there is a single point in the intersection, and therefore there must be an element of the cover containing it, and therefore it must contain uh, an open interval, a symmetric one of radius epsilon, and then it will contain one of those intervals that um, that is shrinking, right? And so if we want uh, to look at the deeper reason, is the reason is the following one. Suppose that we have a sequence, this sequence. Suppose that we have a sequence xn here, and suppose that this sequence is bounded between the lower uh, bound A and the upper bound B. So what is happening in this case is that if this sequence happens to converge, uh, then what we can say about the limit, the only thing that we can say about the limit of the sequence if it converges according to limit arithmetic theorem, is that the limit is going to be smaller or equal than B, 
and greater or equal than a. And here's the point, here's the equal. So in this case, the limit can, limit can escape the open interval to the edge. And this doesn't happen for closed intervals, because for closed intervals, if we have the same uh, nested sequence of closed intervals, then the intersection would be this edge point. So there is no way for a sequence to, esc to escape from a closed interval. This is another uh, justification to the name closed, because it's closed for a sequence that is contained within. If it converges, its limit cannot escape from the interval. Right? And this is the main reason. This is the reason uh, uh, that the open interval isn't compact. And this is the main difference, because limits can escape, limit, limits of sequence can escape an open interval, if, even if there, if the sequence itself is contained in the open interval, the limit can escape to the edge. Okay, and now we're going to see a more uh, elaborate example in text and with a proof. So the discussion so far has motivated us to define compactness. So basically, again, we didn't define exactly what a topological space is, but a topological space is the, the most general context in which we can talk about open sets. And so uh, we have defined a, a compact subset of a topological space as a set that for every open cover of this set, we can always find a finite subcover. And basically the heine borel theorem says that, the, that closed and bounded intervals of the real line are compact sets. Right? And this compactness is the most important property of the closed and bounded interval. Uh, and from these, uh, all the great properties of functions that are continuous and defined on those intervals actually arise. So now let's have this discussion. We've talked about the main difference between the open and the closed intervals, right? And so um, let's see. So um, we have this for metric spaces, but so the question is, the question was, where did this go wrong for the open interval AB? And so the idea is that the limit point C uh, from Cantor's lemma uh, may happen to to be one of the endpoints of the closed intervals in the intersection of justice we've discussed in the visualization. So even if we ha happen to have a sequence that is contained in uh, this open interval for every n, and the sequence converges to some limit point x, then the only thing that we can say about x is that x is strictly uh, is bigger or equal to a and smaller or equal to b, and it can happen that a sequence that is entirely that is strictly smaller than b converges to b, right? And so the limit of uh, a convergent sequence, which is contained in an open interval, can escape to the edge or to one of the edges. So, and for example, the visualization uh, example that we have seen with the intervals, uh, we can take this uh, collection of intervals, right? And then basically what remains to be seen is that the intersection of all those intervals uh, is going to be an empty set, just as we've seen in the visualization. visualization. And so if we, um, so to say, say it um, in an unrigorous way, but intuitively, since the, um, end po the left end point of those intervals uh, gets closer and closer to one, then in the intersection, we're going to have such like an interval one, one, which is an, an empty set, right? And so now if we want to actually prove this, so what we need to show that for every x in, in this interval, there will be an element of the cover that will not contain x. And basically, uh, to prove this, the only thing that we need to notice is that since this sequence converges to 1, then uh, we can write x, uh, since x is strictly smaller than 1, um, then we can write x as 1 minus some positive epsilon, right? Where epsilon is some number strictly bigger than 0 and strictly smaller than 1 because x is in here. And since this is the limit, then the definition of the limit implies that for every epsilon we can find n of epsilon such that for every n greater than n of epsilon, so if x is 1 minus, uh, uh, 1 minus epsilon, so uh, the element of the sequence, right, the difference of this, uh, uh, the difference of this is going to be, or essentially this uh, between its limit, which is 1, is going to be uh, smaller, the distance is going to be smaller than epsilon, and this is exactly what the um, definition of the limit implies. And this, since this limit is 1, basically there exists some epsilon such that for every n greater than n of epsilon, this le left end point of the interval is going to be strictly greater than x, and this is the reason that this intersection is empty. 